Hey, let me, we let me need to get down to dollars in this argument and, and personal responsibility. So I'd like to ask a couple of questions about some money. So the county has run at a surplus for the last several years. What would the surplus be right now? Are you asking that? I am asking that it's question. It's about 50, 50 million. Is that right, Pam? About 50 million unreserved. Seventy, but fifty. About 50. Fifty unreserved. And then, is there? There's a rainy day fund. It, it, now, is, is there's no. not a rainy? That's day that's the that's that what is, we have. That, is, that is the fund. Yeah. So we're we squabble over nine hundred and change, and we have banked fifty million dollars in surplus money. Let, let me let me um, respond to that. We hear a lot about our $50 million rainy day fund or surplus or what, you know. Every year, just about every year, we go to the bond market. And we go to the bond market to borrow a lot of money for schools, for other projects. And the reason we're able to borrow that money at the interest rates, the low interest rates we get, is because we have that. And if that disappears, you're going to see a big cost coming along as far as the monies that we borrow to build schools to do other public work so that's and maybe that wouldn't need to be in place if we didn't have the revenue cap which is a whole other situation so what i'm saying is we need to be very yeah. thoughtful <laughs> if it'd be one thing if everyone if the, if the liquor folks here are saying hey we're going to get rid of the revenue cap and we're going to have a this is the way we're going to help make sure that the county has enough that's money true. but that's not what's happening so we, we do have a real issue in the sense it's a real problem and i don't mean that to uh, i mean I, I believe in the in general intent I, i'll appreciate what mm -hmm. you're doing but to be very clear we are hanging on by a thread from from state funding and if we lose that we've already stabbed ourselves with the revenue cap we're going to be in real real trouble pickle well um just to wrap it up i appreciate everybody's input uh bunky uh, from what I understand, uh, alcohol, what they call alcohol day is actually February 20th, right? When these bills are dropped. So we do have another meeting. Fortunately, it gives you three weeks, right? When we meet on the uh, 7th, I believe. Tuesday the 7th is when we'll meet next. And we can certainly have that on the agenda. By that time, I'm sure we'll have a bill. It may, be, may alleviate a lot of concerns here. I think it's important to work with the Eastern Shore delegation between now and then and to get some real finite answers as in reference to the concerns expressed today. Uh, and that way, uh, we'll, we, we'll have a better idea to, uh, to feel a little more safe as to the next measures to, to uh, take. I hope it is something that is as um, vague as just enabling, and that would allow this council to then actually do the, the individual manipulations together with the executive. So we have three weeks to get that, and we're still, we still have the time. So that's, that's, we're fortunate about that. But we do we do know that on the seventh we'll have to have the answers. And, the well, and just one more uh, comment. I just philosophically, you know, this is our first uh, bill that's coming before you as a council. Philosophically, when a bill comes from the executive office, I, I believe that the best course is for a meeting like this to occur, not for us to come in saying this is the bill we have all the answers, because I I believe that we're a partnership in government. So. To the extent some of those answers probably could have been answered had we put them in writing, but I, I don't. I want us to to have a openness to the county council when we put things like this forward and sort of. So that's what that's that's sort of my philosophy behind this. I'm glad we have it on the table, Jeff. Uh, do we know how long the dispensary system has been in place? I think it's 50 years. Years. Um, it seems, to Josh's point, it seems like we might be rushing things a little bit. Um, we've got a new executive. We've got four new council members. The system's been in place for 50 years. It's obviously not perfect. Um, I think we all <laughs> found out about the word change when COVID came to our, our area. Um, basically, any the ways we've <clears throat> done things is now a lot different. But um, I've spent a few minutes in business. And one of the things I've learned is rushing equals mistakes. So um, I appreciate everybody coming out today to voice their opinion, but there's some sectors that we haven't heard from, like the service organizations, the smaller people that might be affected by this bill. And I, I think we should hear from somebody from the dispensary to. They don't call case. us back, Jeff. 
Yeah, first, Pardon? They don't, first they don't they communicate. Tell us how much well, you know, uh, you know this, they, they should have the opportunity to right. speak as well. Yeah. And yeah. to they Shaney's point, um, we owe it to the people that put us in these chairs to get their opinion mm -hmm. before any decisions made. Absolutely. Um, going back to the rushing equals mistakes oh, thing. Thanks. So short, just um, short. And to Jeff's Thank point, you. Um, you know, a lot of things is happening. New council members, new county executive. There's a lot of new people in in Annapolis too, as Josh said. You know that um, probably doesn't know where Wacomico County is, other than unless they go through on 50. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that's um, still don't know. Yeah. Well, just so you know, that's one thing that we are working on very much, yeah. and I think um, we've been up there twice. We're going up tomorrow, um, so they know Wacomico. Give give them good reasons too. <laughs> yeah. Good reasons. Well, good reasons. I try. You know. All right. Thank you all very much. We'll certainly have you on the agenda for the seventh. Yeah. Thank, you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for thanks for starting this. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. The uh, next item on the agenda <laughs> is the um, enabling legislation to establish a Wicom <laughs> County Sanitary <laughs> District Commission. <laughs> Amanda Pollock, how are you? Good to see you. Thank you uh, in advance for all the work you've helped with the water and sewer master plan. Same with Michael Dunn with the Greater Salisbury Committee is in the back. And Colin Zimmerman <gasps> from CAR. I know it's been a, uh, a lot of people working to make this stuff happen. So we're anxious to see what, uh, what, you, what you have here as far as this, um, this idea. Man, so, you, okay. Okay. So the the county has been um, talking about getting into sewer. I, I'm trying to remember. I believe the date of the uh, the folder I have on my desk is January July. Or I'm sorry, January 18th, 1977. Water and sewerage plan for Wicomico County, and it replaced the one from 1969. And when you read through it, so we've been attempting to do this for a, a long time and just sort of done reports and not really followed up because it's very expensive and it's very time consuming and it's very technical. Um, so this, this bill is enabling legislation that adds our county um, to those that can, can stand up a, a sanitary district. And uh, Amanda actually sent me the, the part of the code. We got it back from Bill Drafter. I was shocked at how simple the bill was. So I asked Paul, is this legitimate? Will this get this done? <laughs> And he, he, and he said yes, um, but I don't know if uh, Amanda wanted to talk about it. Sure. And, and just for the, those who don't know me, I'm Amanda Pollock. I'm a water resources engineer with the Center for Watershed Protection, and I am a resident in Wicomico County. Uh, so this, this bill essentially enables you to create a sanitary district, uh, sanitary district commission, but that's not the whole story. There, this is the first step in a very long process that will be a, a thoughtful and intentional process to bring sewer to failing septic areas. So there are many, many facets to this, a planning component, engineering, financial, the state legislature piece, as well as just what would this sanitary commission look like? And that's not part of this. You know, This is truly a very simple enabling legislation to let you all then decide how to craft this system. So um, as, as you mentioned, the Greater Salisbury Committee has a task force that's been helping to work on this based off of the master plan that the council heard, um, I guess, a, a year or so ago that George Miles and Beer did. So this is kind of taking that to the next step and figuring out some, some actual steps to take to start to enable this. And, and sort of just to give you an overview, how I, I would envision or one way the county council could go is so if we build out a system from a municipality, you know, then th that municipality would send the sewer or sanitary district a bill for that service. Sanitary district then would send the end user, the resident, mm -hmm. a bill with that fee plus their fee because the sanitary district is going to have to have someone who runs the sanitary district and they're going to have to have someone with a collection license for the pipes and the lift stations that we will likely need. Uh, we won't have a plan at that point if we do that model first and that's the fastest way to get into the wastewater business because if you're building a plant you're talking about millions of dollars and years and design work and, and so the fastest way would be to do that. So that's sort of probably in the beginning what it would look like, assuming that's the model we take. Um, question. Good, Joe. Mm -hmm. Question. We have an Urban Services Commission. 
how is that different from the sanitary commission? Is it different? Does it need to be different? Is it, um, was the urban service, I'm asking a lot of questions at one time, was the urban <laughs> services a question, um, commission done by legislation? Um, I don't know if urban services was done by state legislation or not. I'm just not well versed on that. But, but to me, the difference is once you have a sanitary district commission, you're, that will have full-time employees that help to run that commission. And from what I understand, I believe you all are the urban right, services. Right. We, we're not looking for another job. Well, it's not, yeah. I think it's going to be much more time intensive <laughs> mm -hmm. than how the Urban Service Commission meets now. And certainly, and it was something we discussed at Greater Salisbury, a stopgap measure could be that you start this process under the Urban Service Commission, but ultimately, long term, you're better served with people who are dedicated to this. And that's something you'll have to talk about is how many commissioners? Do they come from each district? You know, what is the makeup and, and the background of those people? And, you know, what Bunky was alluding to is very similar to what Dorchester County does. And all the neighboring counties have models that we can look at and talk mm -hmm. about, and they're all slightly different. And some are going to work for Wicomico and some aren't. But, um, yeah, so I, I see that, you know, potentially there, there would still be need for an urban service district because there are still urban services around. Um, but ultimately, I think you're better <laughs> So... Mr. Luffman um, talked about hooking to municipalities. Where, where do you see us going to, or how do we get there with Salisbury saying they want to annex anything that's um, um, they hook up to? I guess sure, is a good way sure. to put it. Yeah. So, and for again, for those who don't know me, I spent the last ten years as a city of a Salisbury employee, so I, I know their code very well. I, I don't work for them as anymore, as I said. I think there needs to be discussions. And part of it is whether or not, you know, what is the health need? Are there failing septic systems? Because Salisbury's code does differentiate in serving areas with a health need versus uh, serving areas that just want to be annexed. So there needs to be a conversation with Salisbury's council to really understand their policies. And then a big part of it is just, again, what Bunky was talking about, who's owning that infrastructure? If, if Wicomico County's saying, we're happy to own, we are going to own and operate this sewer collection system. All we are asking for is to hook into your wastewater treatment plant and you send us a bill. That's a different story than say the line that went to the airport where Salisbury own, operates and I believe owns that line, that water main to the airport, um, even though Wicomico County took on the, the project and the debt to put that in. So that, those conversations need to happen. And as part of the Greater Salisbury Committee Task Force, we started some preliminary conversations with municipalities just to test their temperature and to see where they are because the master plan done by GMB referenced that the county has approximately 18,000 septic systems. And I, if I recall correctly, I think they had estimated that 10,000 of those could be served by a neighboring municipality. Well, that's a lot. And that's a lot going to the existing treatment plants. And what we've heard from municipalities so far is they all don't have capacity. You know, I mean, they're, they're struggling and they all have different levels of struggle. So, so it's really going to be very individual. It's, it's case by case and each town has different policies for annexation, but I think, I think a conversation needs to be had. And I, I just don't think that's ever happened before. Well, and to give some backstory, there are eight municipalities, incorporated municipalities in Wacomico. Seven of them have wastewater plants. Uh, Mardella is the only one that doesn't have water or wastewater. So, if I can just throw in here what you said about Salisbury. Fruitland's urban service agreement with the county also requires annexation if you're contiguous in the, and the city requests it. So it's the same. It costs money. Same situation. They just become a citizen of the city. Yes. yes. So, <clears throat> one of the concerns that I would have is some, some, uh, some residents that live in the county, uh, not don't necessarily want to be on sewer or water. They're happy with their water and they're happy with their septic system. And uh, you know, the, the, there's just a, there's some of them, and I understand that because I don't, I, I wouldn't want to be. I live out in the country, and I wouldn't want to be hooked up to the grid myself. Um, I like the independence. I like that about where I live, and. Uh, you know, and I know that not everyone agrees with that, and that's fine. And I think we should move with a sewer and water plan, clearly. But we do need to keep in mind that there are residents in the county um, that specifically live in the county 
because they don't want sewer and water. That that would be my uh, that that's my concern. So we had a meeting with Les Snap from the health department from MD. MDE. Um, some of these people won't have a choice, and what I mean by that is they have a failing septic. They don't realize that their septic is failing because it's not backing up into their you know bathtub or whatever. Um, and then when they go to sell their house, their house is their house is potentially worthless. So we're seeing that in certain areas, and I'm you know I don't promote myself as a huge environment mentalist or anything like that, but this really is a health concern. Um, and so for some areas, they don't have the ability to get a new septic. They don't have the ability, they don't right. have the land to do it. So one area in particular mm -hmm. is Old Ocean City Road. Mm -hmm. So they don't have space on their, you know, on their land to get a new um, drain field or anything like that. So they're kind of handcuffed in a way like when it comes to that. And so we don't want sewage on a, in any of our yards. We don't want mm -hmm. sewage in our streets and things like that. So in, in some aspects, and I understand what you're saying, um, the people that are very out in the rural area um, would not be, uh, that right. would kind of fall in that 8,000. That, that's, that's more or less what I'm talking about is the people that live out in those rural areas. And I understand places like Parsonsburg and the houses are really close together. And there's a lot of those uh, houses that can't get septic systems because they are too close together. Uh, my concern would be is, is it going to impact all the fields around it? Are, are we going to be pressured to uh, develop the entire Eastern, like the you know, entire Wacomico County. I'm just saying these are just questions. This isn't going to happen. This is these are just questions, right? So uh, that would be my concern: is uh, are 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 we going to turn into Lewis, Delaware? Have you been to Lewis, Delaware? You can't even get up the road there with. It's it's a it's a real pain in the butt, and uh, I just you know I'm, those are just concerns. And, so and, my, and I get the point, but let me let me interrupt real sure. quick because these are issues that we're going to be discussing when we when we work on the mass, water and sewer master plan, okay? And they're they're good questions. I want to get back to the issue of the sanitary district. That the per reason of the work session is whether or not we create it or not. Again, I, I would only ask again to make sure that we have to know we have to I think understand that if we send the letter of recommendation as you're requesting for the, to create the sanitary district, what does happen to the urban service district? Because the urban service district, which is this council, is the, is the commission that actually approved the village down river and other, other uh, you know, water and sewer and, and street light issues as well. So I'd really like to know what happens with that. My personal feelings is if it went away, I'd say great. Because I don't really, I don't really like that responsibility. I'm not sure that, that uh, having a county council elected members, I don't think they're really the most qualified ones to make decisions on a wastewater treatment plant. Correct. I think you need experts in that field. I'm guessing that creating a sanitary district will this be of other elected individuals, or will this be specifically um, engineers and people who understand the business? I think that's part of how, how you'll decide to create it. Do you want it to be appointed positions that come before you and you review the appointments, or are they elected? It, it may be uh, better to control as appointed positions where you set qualifications for those members. But I think the Urban Service Commission exists until you turn it over to a Sanitary District Commission. Okay, so and then would, I guess we need to know whether or not we would have to do that. I, I think I think that would be on a local level because I, I don't believe that was a state. Um, I, don't I think the state gave the County Council the authority to be the... Um, I don't think so. But we will pull back. I, I know we have looked, uh, Mr. Wilbur and I have looked back in the in that 1960s document that started some of that. So we, we can look back and, and determine that for sure. But I think, you know, this enables it through the state. You then would still have to create your sanitary district and then once you have done that, you could probably turn the responsibility of the Urban Service Commission over to it if that's what you desire. And to get at Councilman Wynn's question, and Amanda, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that no one will be compelled to hook up to a wastewater plant unless you have a failing septic that you can't account for on your own property with a new drain field and that kind of thing. Yeah, that's correct. And to, to your point, what you're saying is exactly the state's Department of Planning's concern, is they don't want to put sewer in an area and then encourage growth that otherwise was not in an intended growth area. Mm -hmm. So comprehensive planning, zoning, everything will still be in effect. And, and certainly the state doesn't want to see that happen either. Does the council feel comfortable sending a letter of endorsement to us to enable us to have a sanitary yes. commission mm -hmm. district? Okay. Um, sounds good. We'll, um, we'll do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Amanda. Thanks, Amanda. <clears throat> Lower. So. Okay. 
next item on the agenda is the restructuring of the county executive's office. No, that's okay. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, still good morning. Yes, good morning. Uh, yes. Pam Olin, finance director. So let me let me get all the introductions first. Okay. If I could, uh, so. Um, you will all, you will need it. somehow or other we're going to have to work out the microphones. I'm sorry. You can hear me. <laughs> they they need it for uh, for pack 14. Oh, Chief Robert Harris from Pittsville Police Department. Paul Wilbur, County Attorney. You can hang on to that one. And okay, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. And I think you already introduced yourself. So Thank you. The. Um, this agenda request is to come before council to do an amendment to the budget, which would have no financial impact for fiscal 2023. Um, as you know, the uh, budget document has a position control document. We are required to um, have employees um, that are within a department be on that position control document. And thus, we are coming before council to amend the executive's office uh, to add two positions and to change the title of a third position. Those amendments do not have any financial impact in fiscal 23 as there has been sufficient um, vacancies in that department for the fiscal year um, as currently uh, crafted. And so what we're looking to do is add a public information officer position as well as a legislative aid position that would report up through the executive's office and then to change the deputy director of uh, administration to a, um, and I want to get this title right. Executive advisor of public safety. And so, um, the executive advisor of public safety would be a position that, so right now, director of administration, then deputy director, um, kind of encompasses all departments within the county. This would kind of put that second position to the side to allow the deputy, uh, the, the new position to take over the requirements of public safety within the county and thus have corrections, emergency services, liaison between all of the sheriff's departments within, or not sheriff's services, the sheriff's department and all the police departments within the county, as well as be a liaison for um, all of the volunteer and paid uh, fire services and ambulance services within the county. So and carve that off of the director of administration and then that director of administration would then maintain the other departments within the county. So um, it's kind of dividing the, um, the responsibilities so that they can be more specifically focused on strengths um, that they may have. Isn't, isn't the assistant director of administration a, a charter requirement? I don't think it's a requirement because for two years we haven't had one. Well, we haven't had one because nobody's hired one, but right. it's in the charter that the, uh, I think it'd have to go to referendum, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, I've, probably, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The reason that I'm doing this and the only reason that I'm not naming this person as the director or the uh, deputy director is because the requirements are a little bit more um, detailed. I want 20 years of law enforcement or emergency services uh, experience and specialized training. So that does not fall under a deputy director. So it's just changing the qualification. It's literally the same model that Wayne and Weston used where Weston's strengths were focused in public works. Um, this person's strengths would be focused in on Department of Corrections and Emergency Services. So if we did this, it'd have to go to a vote, what, in two years? Are you looking to retitle it? Or are you looking to add that position as a new position? Retitle it. Okay. Mr. Holloway, Councilman Holloway is correct. The assistant director of administration position is mentioned in our charter. Um, so without having that position there, um, you're kind of going around um, the purpose. 
or to say it another way, the, the uh, assistant administrative director, I think what you're describing is given those tasks. Right. And then say for the next election, if you want to do a specific charter amendment and the council's okay with it, you can do it. So that is one way we could do this is, is that we could um, leave the title um, but add tasks that would be specific. So um, we could leave the title as it currently stands, but um, the intention of the, of the um, executive's office would be such that the person that would be hired would have very specific skill sets that uh, would be focused then on emergency services and um, that type of stuff. Well, that, yeah. that would be up to the executive to hire that person, but it would have to follow, mm -hmm. it would have to follow what's in the charter as far as requirements. She couldn't change the requirement. you couldn't change the requirements, right? I mean, it has to follow what's in the charter. I mean, it would have to go to referendum um, if you're looking to strike assistant director administration. Yeah. Um, but I also want to point out that under charter section 315, Andy, you have your charter with you. I don't know if you want to just confirm this, but council approves um, the assistant director administration, whereas this public safety position, I think you're looking to um, just have it as a, it, uh, what type It of really position? doesn't matter. I mean, if, if council needs to approve it, that's fine. My point is, is that I need someone that might not necessarily have a bachelor's degree in communications, and I'm allowed to make fun of it because that's what I have. Um, I need somebody, again, with more specialized experience. Um, and there's more to it than just those two, um, and just to kind of go through. So not only are they going to oversee the Department of Corrections and Emergency Services, they are also going to be, again, the liaison between the municipal police departments, Delmar, Fruitland, Salisbury, Pittsville, our fire departments, volunteer and career. We have a fire service agreement that's due in six months. It's actually expired at this point in time, and the city has graciously given us um, till um, June or so to take care of that. This person would oversee that. They will also be a liaison between us and the Wacomico County Courts, ECI, Maryland State Police, Wacomico County Public Schools per school safety. They also will be uh, overseeing the Police Accountability Board. There are new things that are coming down. Uh, we are out of compliance right now. Um, we have uh, six or seven cases that have not been heard yet due to lack of technology and lack of resources. So this person is going to get us um, in compliance with the Police Accountability Board. Um, they will also also be a liaison between state's attorney, Wacomico County Sheriff's Office, the Fraternal Order of Police. Um, we have a new agreement that's getting ready to come up in a year and a half, so uh, negotiations for that will start in about six to eight months. They will also be um, the liaison between us and Warwick Community College per the Police Academy. Um, and so keeping us all up to date on training and things like that of things that need to occur kind of from the state level. I think um, in the climate that we're in, I think it's important to have Wacomico County have something in place um, to say that uh, we are in compliance, that we are following everything that we need to. Um, and I don't really want to get into the details of, of what has happened with law enforcement, but um, this position is pretty imperative in my mind and what I see. It if I can respond to it, sort of what Laura said, but on a slightly different thing, I mean, these might be fantastic ideas, but I think it's clearly not a restructure. It's under the charter, it's a reorganization. And it has certain procedures that have to be followed. I mean, some of these things you may be able to do without the reorganization, but not others. So that's something that the councils and the executives should think about. We were told reorganization on Friday, so that's what I went with, but you may be correct. Go ahead, Pam. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It is reorganization, yeah. not restructure. I, I wrote the word restructure. So, Good. okay, so I might have it. And we are coming before council. Um, so anyways, so we are looking to, so if we can't, I'm, I'm not sure, Laura, if, is there qualifications in the charter listed for the deputy director? Is there specific um, title or specific qualifications that they would need to have? I, I don't recall that. It's not in the yeah. charter. It, okay, not the qualifications. Just there is an assistant okay. director of administration. So one way to <laughs> do this is that council then could be presented the position, the person um, 
that uh, the executive is interested in not change the title at this point in time, leave the title, but the, the tasks would be as we've just described. How do you do a job search? And someone who's extremely qualified for this title is bypassed for someone who ha absolutely has no qualifications for this title. So again, if there's no, um, if there's no requirements listed in the charter, you could advertise the requirements as to what you're looking for for this job. But can I jump in again? Part of the problem is, and this is a work session, so you may be able to work this out somehow, but the, the things that make it a reorganization, which means it has to be presented 60 days before the budget to the council and it has to go through, uh, through a regular uh, pro uh, legislative process, among them are if the, if the change that you're proposing alters or defines functions and responsibilities expands or deletes powers of various departments or agency boards or other bodies of the executive branch, which, which I think that is the other, there's another one that says uh, reorganization is if you initiate a rearrangement of reporting response uh, re relationships, financial compensation or multiple positions within departments or offices. So uh, like I said, you may be to work it out, maybe you know, in some fashion, maybe the way you were talking about is just not retitling but you got one that's, that's um, a new position. There's two new positions being requested. Well, one's being reactivated, but it's one's still being, new. It's still it, new. Yes, it's one is being reactivated, one is being created. So I, I, think, I think it's a reorganization. Now, how that affects whether you're able to work it out some other way and get it through on a temporary or even a permanent basis, I, I don't know. Here, it's, here, I think it's, go ahead, Paul. Here's a comment I would make is, uh, the executive needs the help in the executive office to move her um, ideas forward. And it's going to take some time to do a reorganization. I think there's that language that's in the charter that says for both the director of administration and the assistant director of administration, they perform the duties as directed by the executive. I think there's a a point where we can take this and move forward and then you know, yeah, that's what I'm saying that there may be a way to work a at least one of them idea, out yeah let's move forward so you're, is talking my about, you're talking about the assistant director of administration this assistant director of administration that's been described so that person would be hard you know with the skill set that's in the charter yep plus if she wanted more skill set right Okay. You know, if the okay. executive says, I so, want more. Okay, so yeah. you know, what, what was the qualifications you said a while ago that you had, Julie? 20 years of uh, law enforcement. No, no, um, Mrs. Giordano, I'm sorry. You said you were a, your educational qualifications. Oh, no, I, I said, I, I think it's not in the charter. I think it's in the job description. Oh, okay, it yeah. It talks about a bachelor's degree. Yeah, okay. Which to me, I mean, is fine, but it's yeah. not really so, what I'm. So according to what we'd have to hire somebody with a bachelor's degree plus the qualifications that you would want for. Well, but the, the job description can be changed that since that is not specified in the charter. Okay. So the job description would not need to have to be. The job description is not in the charter. Well, right. Okay, so the job description is not in the charter, but you had to bring that forward to council for approval whenever you're changing those minimum qualifications. Yeah. Um. Which we just got a new HR person, so she's actually in the works of going through all of that. Okay. Somebody else, I, I need to talk about my yeah, question. Go ahead, Josh. I, say, well, why, I, I just don't understand why not just keep the assistant director of administration as its job and then just hire somebody with public safety. I mean, it doesn't really matter what their strength is, whether it be you know, like Wes was with Well, we could, we could do that. The issue is, is the job, now she's saying the job description would have to come to council for an amendment for saying that, um, you know. Preferred. That's preferred right. instead of required. Most yeah. people who have the 20 years, most, I won't say all, but most that have that, the specialized training that I need, have training, you know, in classes in something that doesn't equal a bachelor's degree and whatever. So that's where you're going to And really, <laughs> just so he can go, I just wanted to bring Bob in just so he could talk about the importance of this position as well. And then that way he can get back to Portsville <laughs> really quick. I know we've kept him a long time.
morning, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so um, having had a great deal of conversation with uh, Mr. Illuminati, and I'm sure you guys have had the same conversation, probably ad nauseum, about the Police Accountability Board. And um, I will tell you that it's going to change. It's going to change next year in legislature. Um, when it does, and once that's affirmed, the likelihood of it changing again is probably very, very small for a long period of time. So we don't have but one shot to get this right. And as it is right now, it's, it, when I say overreaching, I don't mean that in a, in, a, in, a, in a diminutive way. What I'm trying to say is that if somebody comes in and writes a complaint because my mustache is too long, it has to be held by, heard by the accountability board. That's likely to change in the next legislative session. But in order to do that, there's gonna have to be dialogue that comes from all law enforcement agencies through the county executive's office. There's never been a more important time for that. As a whole, law enforcement agencies don't communicate well. We just don't. Sometimes within our own agencies, we don't communicate well. It's not a failure of an administration, and it's no one's fault. It just doesn't happen. This position would enable that. And I can give you some examples. I have on my phone a video, and that video was taken and given to me on May the 19th at 1034 in the morning. That video has a picture. It depicts a young man with a handgun on June the 12th. Glenn Hilliard was murdered with that handgun. But there's no mechanism in place. I had talked about this with other deputies. I had talked about it with other law enforcement agencies. But there's nothing in place. We could talk about ESIC, which is a, an electronic format where you enter information and it goes out. It falls through the cracks. This type of position could facilitate biweekly or monthly meetings where information is exchanged. Okay, you know what I'm talking about, Shane, because you've done this, okay? When the information ex is exchanged, questions are developed. And answers to those questions create new questions. And we open a channel of communications that we normally wouldn't have. You see what I'm saying, where I'm going with this? Okay, um, <clears throat> I have a video that was sent to me by someone that lives in city limits of Salisbury. And it is of a bunch of people on dirt bikes and four wheelers. They blocked off a road in town. They let two people come in. They let drug transactions take place. They were monitoring police communications on scanners. But this information wasn't available to police officers. I shared it with police officers when I got it. And when I talked to somebody from Salisbury City, they said they had never heard it, even though I had given it to another city officer. This is, we're falling short, guys. Okay, and the legislation that's coming before us today is tying our hands and it's emboldening the, the, the criminal element. You guys are in a position to make a difference. Okay. Bob, excuse me, what, what difference would it make about you sending a video of dirt bikes on a street um, about some crime happening? Uh, um, what difference would it make for somebody sitting in the executive's office I, I don't understand where you're because they from can that. facilitate meetings that take place. They can make sure that there's information sharing, Joe. But on it these, on this on. list, on this whole list of organizations, um, the state police have, have all these folks, the sheriff's departments, sheriff endorsed this. Is all the all these organizations endorsed to be part of this? Have they all endorsed uh, all to be uh, part of it? Um, no. I actually meet with the sheriff on Friday, but he's where. Um, but the. Uh, police departments, the municipal police departments, the fire departments, um, state's attorney who I've met with, I've met with Dave Owens with Wacomico County Public Schools and, and talked about this, this was a while back. Uh, obviously the Fraternal Order of Police, John Moses, yes. They all want communication with the executive office which well, they have not had in I'm two sure years. I'm sure they do, I'm, I'm sure the county offices do, but does, does the state police do, does the city police do? I mean, well, I'm, I'm wondering I'm, how involved the county is going to be We're with other agencies. Why us? I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why not us? Why would we not be like? Well, why would we not have open communication when it comes to law enforcement, public safety, and when it comes to something? 
Well, come, so the state police, we have to be in contact with them. How often do you help out state troopers on calls? Right. Right. So we, they work in Wacomico County. My point is, is that there is legislation and things like that that are coming down from the state level that are bigger than the Wacomico County Council. And what I'm trying to do is put something in place to get ahead of what's coming down. Well, why not work with the state of Maryland to say, hey, we have an issue which is basically regional coordination. We have a regional coordination problem. And it's not just obviously crime happens that, you know, they don't just stop at the border and then jump out and then get, you know, obviously right, right. they don't know the difference, right? So uh, it seems to be like there's a broader coordination issue and it mm -hmm. seems to be that it's stemming from police accountability board and all that kind of work. So maybe mm -hmm. there's funding or maybe there's something could be happening elsewhere from a state perspective, mm -hmm. but well, why, I mean, why Conoco sorry, County, I guess, yeah. on that is the obvious. Well, and the other thing is too, is that when it comes to this, I ran on three specific things. I ran on three concerns of citizens, public safety, education, and our local economy. So you can see the liquor bill that I put forward is for our local economy. Education, I have 18 years experience teaching. When it comes to public safety, Okay, it's an important issue. So I would like my administration to mirror the issues that are, you know, that our Wacomico County citizens have. And so, um, you know, I'm here on a daily basis, every single day, and fielding different things. We have a lot of issues in Department of Corrections. We have a lot of issues in emergency services. And it doesn't necessarily have to do with the leaders. It has to do with the turnover. We have issues with our fire department. These are not areas of strength of mine. So I am coming to the county council to say, I do not have the strength. These areas are not areas of strength for me. They are not areas of strength for Bunky. These are, you know, and so I remember when you appointed Bunky or you confirmed Bunky, you said, I really hope that you have a deputy director. We found the areas of weakness. These are the areas of weakness. And your organization is only as strong as your weakest link. I, I have a question. Hang on a second, Shane, okay. James. Yeah. I would like to say I, I think this position sounds it sounds good. Uh, we have 15 fire departments. We have a lot of uh, a lot of police departments, and I'm sure there's going to be more in the future. We have a lot of issues in this county, and uh, there are a lot of issues recently regarding of public safety. And uh, it, from what I can see is. If we have uh, a director that is just overseeing that, and just instead of us as a as a as a body, as a government body, uh, being um, a, uh, reactive to issues, we can now be proactive because the director can now communicate between fire departments. They already they do a great job communicating between themselves, but they can communicate between them more efficiently. They can communicate uh, between police departments more efficiently, including the State Department. All these people want to work together. It, uh, you know, I, they all want to work together. We all want to have a safe community. We all want to go down the street and not have to worry about getting run over by a motorcycle that could have been prevented if we had someone that directed us towards an area where we have issues. Um, and, and, you know, I think you did run on a public safety platform. I think this is going to help your administration be more efficient in this line. Uh, and that is the goal, to make this government more efficient. And uh, you, you clearly don't need an assistant uh, director because it seems like you and Bunky are two right there. There's a, there's a director and an assistant right there. And you guys have, you, 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 you're, you're, you're on it. And uh, I can see that you do need help with the public sef safety area. And if you hire somebody that can head up that entire department, it, it might just alleviate a lot of future problems. If I may. So the one suggestion would be is for this piece of it, instead of changing the title, leave the title as is, and when we come forward with legislation, we would come forward with the legislation as well to amend the job description to put preferred, not required. Well, if you're bringing it forward as a new position, then you're creating a new job description. You wouldn't need to amend the assistant directors. Well, but what I'm saying, I'm not bringing forward, we, we don't, we don't want an assistant director. We would amend the assistant director job description to say a degree is preferred but not required. So then you're retitling? No, because I'm not changing the title. I'm changing, the, I'd leave the title as assistant director. Okay. Leave the title as assistant director, <coughs> take out the word required in the job description, put in preferred, 
and then the executive would have the leeway to come to council with somebody that meets the job description requirements that she has requested because it wouldn't tie the hands to having somebody have a college degree. What's the pay range of a county, uh, assistant county and administrator right now? Because you, you, four thousand. Pardon me. I think it's one hundred four thousand. No, it, uh, for the assistant director, it actually was budgeted and uh, for one hundred thirty-one thousand. So, assistant director. Okay. So the assistant director, that one hundred thirty-one thousand is the mid-range of the position because mm -hmm. that's how we did the budget. So what was presented to you is we're looking for somebody in maybe the hundred thousand dollar range, so that position would be available at that price point. At that price point, sorry, that's a uh, <laughs> at that in that range. Is this an at-will position? The so it group? would be one that would have to come before council as a deputy for approval, but uh, just the first time. Right. Unlike the department heads that have to be reappointed each time, it would just be for the first time like all deputies are. I think that um, the purpose of an assistant um, director is for secession, so that if Bunky were to leave and go somewhere else, there would be somebody in place that could take over and manage the affairs that are necessary. I think you're, I don't like, I'm not really fond of changing job descriptions and using subtle terminology that says, well, you know, maybe or any other duties required. I don't think that's what the public expects of us as elected officials. Who so, can we represent but them? the advantage to this plan is to have strengths within the the executive office that um, we don't currently have. Well, I, I understand that, um, but again, I think a lot of these responsibilities, <coughs> you should make sure that um, you know, Bunky, either Bunky or else, who, who the assistant might be, has some of those qualifications. They don't have to be completely engaged in this entire philosophy or this entire profession, but I think that's the idea, again, is secession was the idea for this, not just to have someone who's in law enforcement. If you want somebody in law enforcement, put it to referendum so that the public gets an idea of exactly where we're heading, because to a certain extent, I think you're, you're growing government, and, and I think it would be a more fair and open exchange with the public if they knew that this job of an assistant um, uh, director was exactly that and not trying to keep all the pieces together with every law enforcement agency in Wicomico County. I think they want the assurances of secession. And I, it's a referendum in my opinion. The other two positions, the uh, public information officer, I get that that's sort of been in there. I personally wouldn't have a problem with that. I think the legislative aid, um, I, I really believe that also falls well within the responsibilities of either um, uh, the the uh, director of administration or assistant. I mean, that's that was Bunky's strong suit and, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the big selling points of using uh, Mr. Luffman here, or, or at least hiring him because of his liaison ability with the state of Maryland. Sure, absolutely. Um, just to kind of, I mean, we've been here for 12 to 15 hour days every day. Sure. Um, so things that the legislative aid position has already accomplished would include planning the legislative breakfast and the agenda, the legislative agenda for the delegation. So a whole folder was given with the Eastern Shore needs. Uh, they planned and executed the airport press conference with the 3.3 million that was given to our airport, or to SWED for the airport. Um, letters of support for our delegation, research and support for the legislative bills, including uh, the liquor bill in the sanitary district. Um, these people were here because of that legislative aid. Um, and they've also attended various, you know, GSC uh, chamber events. And we've been at work for less, like for a month. You don't have a legislative aid though. Well, I have somebody that um, currently is uh, doing other duties as assigned per the charter and per the job description. But you had somebody working as a legislative aid? I had somebody doing other duties as assigned yeah. per the job description. Job. On a temporary basis. I guess that. I guess what job description? So the job description of every job description that we have here in the uh, county, the very last. So hold on, the very last line of every single job says other duties as assigned. I, I'm. I think what they're asking is what job. The job is currently. What is the job? It is currently a uh, position within the finance department. Has that person been working in the finance department since they were hired to work? No, they're in doing finance? other duties as assigned. Per the job description. In the county executive's office. They're doing other, 
they are doing other yeah. duties as assigned yeah. that the executive has requested yeah. to be yeah. done. Temporarily until the restructure came in front of council. So that person has been doing that for 17 days, so time to time, per the charter, per the job description. I have two questions. Um, the public safety uh, person that you're looking for. Yes, ma'am. I see one, your chief from yes. what, what, what's Pittsville. Pittsville. Oh, I didn't know they had police bar. <laughs> Learned something today. I think <laughs> that you should get my suggestion. You should have all the, the blessings if you're trying to get people to work together, mm -hmm. you have the police chief from Pittsville, you should have a, a representative from Fruitland, the city of Salisbury, the state trooper, mm -hmm. uh, the sheriff's department here at this table yeah. Yeah. to get- We didn't have enough chairs, but yeah, well, you I get you. Yeah. Yeah. They could be in a row in the back gotcha. of you. Yep. But what I'm saying, when you make a presentation, we should, I would want to see the blessings sure. myself that they would want this coordination. Mm -hmm. Now, I've worked um, previous with Weed and Seed, which we met with the state, the state trooper, the sheriff's department, and the city mm -hmm. official. And Ivan now is in the Del Mar, and they've lost, a, you know, lost an officer. So I would like to see the coordination because I was under the impression that they were coordinating, and uh, I know Chief Duncan is an excellent chief. Um, I support her wholeheartedly. She could have been in here and gave some insight on her experiences not in, it went before she came mm -hmm. and because uh, she has the educational background mm -hmm. and her experience since she's been in Salisbury. So all these chiefs and departments, fire department, I need to see a letter. I want to see a letter of sure. support for this particular position. Also, when we talked about the the position that you're doing um, dues as assigned mm -hmm. I wanted to see outreach because when new positions come up it should be advertised and that's one of the requirements I believe EEOC equal opportunity because you're representing the county we're representing the county and we would like to see people that look like me or if people look like somebody else in these offices upstairs. Now, some of the people that are in um, positions of color, they are either down the basement or um, in these offices that maybe some of us don't, don't see. But if you come into the county executive and the mayor's office, we need to see people that represent the community. And I would like to see when positions come up, some like, like, like the public safety, uh, any other position, um, that comes within, since I'm on the county council, uh, advertised in the newspaper and maybe in-house people that's already wanted to be um, promoted if the salary is right. But right now I haven't seen that happen, and I would like to see that. Um, I'm saying all this because I won't be here for a while. Right. So I'm getting my, my two cents in right now. So these jobs that they were hired under have been advertised. They just were not filled. So, advertised I, where? Advertised through HR. They were open positions. So, so one of them is in finance, the revenue specialist, and then the other position was a department assistant. So both of these positions have been advertised. Um, but keep in mind too, as an executive, in order for your organization to be successful, you need your people, the people you can trust, the people you rely on, the people that are going to make you your very best. So those are the type of people that I look for. So you're telling me a person that walks out in the street, walks off the street and apply for this job, like we hired Barbara Duncan, we didn't know her at all. Mm -hmm. She come from, she, she's from local, but she's from Buffalo, she worked right. in Buffalo, New York. She's been one of the best police chiefs that the city of Salisbury has. Mm -hmm. So you're saying when we did uh, look at her resume and everything, her qualifications, we didn't know her from Adam, but she's done an excellent job. But you still should give people the opportunity to apply for these jobs. And they're going to question, people are going to question, mm -hmm. and especially going to question me, because I come from the African-American community, that how come there's no black person working in the office or how come there's no Asian person or Hispanic person or Haitian person that same way with the with the with the county I mean the city 
you know, we're, they're in the same boat. And I question that. So I would like to see these people not harm people you know, your friends, or whoever. You need to hire people, qualified people, to represent the county. Okay. They're not just representing you. They're representing the county people, 106,000 people. Okay, so the person who's doing the legislative aid, which we can't bring his name up because that would be That's against right. this, um, has years of experience in legislation. The PIO person has a master's, in, or her MBA in two years of law school. So they are beyond qualified to do these positions. So it's not about friends and whoever, you know, my, my girls are, my boys. It's about who is going to do the best job. And in 30 days, we have accomplished more than what happened in two years. Yes. So yeah. yeah, but one of them has been hired in the roads department and the other one has been hired in finance. So how can you say that the work they're doing Because per the charter, is, is, it says is, that I can direct anything, you know, for any positions as other duties as assigned temporarily. So, and the flow chart that you all provided me, I followed that flow chart. I went to the department heads, I went to HR, and then I went to payroll. I followed that exact flow chart which was that you all provided. And per the charter, I was able to do it on a temporary basis. So, so since in, so, so since hired in roads. Mm -hmm. They don't even they don't even go to roads. They go to right. your office. If someone is hired in finance, mm -hmm. they're not even in finance. Do you they're know where I roads to I, I, Councilman, I don't do you know or president? To me, to me, if you don't mind. I'll yeah, finish. go ahead. To me, that's a misappropriation of funds because the taxpayers are the ones that approve mm. the budget. Well, not to work in your office. Maybe we should bring Mark Whitelock in. Do you know where our roads department is today? I don't think that's relevant. I'm worried about these two employees. You say they're so qualified, and everything that they've done meets the qualifications. Councilman, but the do you know where our roads department is today? Was for a finance person and for a roads person. Do you know where our roads department is today? And for My the whole question week? is, how do they these are reporting to Steve Miller at the Civic Center putting in dirt for the rodeo? I understand when there's an exception to the rule. Right. This is not an exception to the rule. These people are doing nothing in the finance department. Mm -hmm. They're doing nothing in roads. And when you say that these individuals followed are following their job restriction and and as Shani said, uh, people who other people who might have been uh, um, uh, uh, Qualified. Well, not just qualified, but applying for the job. Mm -hmm. You may have turned down someone who has 10 years of roads experience because you didn't really want anybody who was in roads. You wanted somebody to work in your office as a legislative aide. The position was open, and I followed the protocol per the charter. Not when you only follow the last line, which says, or other duties required. That temporarily, is not a I was job directed by our director itself. of finance that that was okay to do temporarily and to follow in? the charter. I, I think it, the council finds that troubling the, as well. Go ahead, Andy. Unless it's someplace else, the job description for finance does not have that language. It says that they can do other, this is not a total, uh, a complete list of all the jobs. This is the job description for M33 finance uh, revenue assistant. And it says the omission of specific duties does not exclude their position. If the work is similar or related logically uh, or a logical assi uh, assignment to the position, that's the position in revenue, and, and it says further down, it says they can perform related work as required. That's re related to the job as revenue assistant. Now, maybe there's something elsewhere that gives you, like you said, the temporary. I'm not looking at that. I'm just looking at the job description. But So we have a <laughs> – sorry, go ahead, Paul. Yeah. What I'd like to do to – because we're getting very close to a personnel discussion in open session and don't right. want to go there. Uh, it's just, let's figure out a path forward. I think the executive has described what she needs and what we want to do is come forward with the appropriate resolution, that legislative bill to move forward. Well, I got one thing to say about this and I'll, I'll leave it alone and try not to be as temperamental as some of the other folks in the room. But anyway, the big problem with that is what happened. And Pam, you know, it's, I, I don't know what the phrase, there's probably a word or a term, I call it truth in financing because when you, when we budget money to go to the roads or to the civic center or to the finance department for operations, that's where that money goes or should go. And, and that's what you call the truth and in, in what it costs to actually operate that department. And we have had that issue in the past. We had that at the county roads years ago when they were using um, 
not county roads. We had the issue with the landfill when they were using the money from the landfill to help build the, um, the extension on the um, collector road. So it, it kind of muds up the muds up the finances, you know, as far as the operations of any department, not just roads, not just finance. When you're using when you're using that um, those resources in another department. Now, as far as the civic center and the roads being out at the civic center putting dirt in, that's fine. But the civic center or Rec and Parks should reimburse the roads for what they're doing. May I? So. The proposal does not cost, the proposal would move, would create two new positions or reactivate one and create one. There is sufficient funding within the executive's office to do this for this fiscal year. The other charter requirements that say that certain expenditures have to be exactly as is and you can't hire somebody without this is tying the hands of not just the executive's office but all offices within this county we have an executive form of government that was elected with a new executive in december we're expecting this executive to walk in the door and govern what the executive has requested is the ability to use the funding within her department to hire these positions. There is that funding. Yes, I was asked if there was a way to bring these people on what, within the charter currently. And I said, it may not be the best way, but there is a way that doesn't violate the charter. I do not like the implications that I violated the charter. I'd say violated the charter. I was, said, I was very surprised at how this has transpired. I, but you are saying that I have done something wrong. I, I'm saying that I think and it's- And so I, I, I do not accept that well because well, I do not believe I did something wrong. When you say that the, that the money that's been authorized to be spent in your finance department uh, and then I'm is saying used, is, is, I, is used in the executive's office. But what I'm saying that's right the, now is that you, as the legislative body, have the ability to let us spend this out of the executive's office, and you're saying, I'm not sure I want to do that. It's coming out of your department. No. If we do this, it will come out of her department. If we do this, I was talking about who's signing the checks now. The check's not I, being signed. I sign right? every check. Yeah, you're signing a check for someone who doesn't really work in your department. I, and I, I find have, that surprising. I have stated that I it is a way to do it. It is not the best way, but how how do you want, irregardless of this being this county executive or the right. next county executive, how do you want a county executive to come in and set up an administration? without the flexibility to set up an administration. Something a little more ethical. Uh, Josh, go ahead. Well, I, I was, first of all, on that note, I don't know that we should expect a county executive to come in on day one and have everything ready to go. But that being said, you know, this is, we have budget is law. We have a process that's our end of holding, you know, we hold the purse. We have the ability to make the changes there. I think um, <clears throat> I would like to see um, continue to support the county executive and giving more flexibility and more leeway in order to have the tools you need in order to get the job done. Um, personally, you know, I do feel like the, you know, it's important for me from the succession planning side of things that we have a, you know, an assistant that can help out Mr. Luffman and can be there to take over the next, uh, you know, can be there to, to help hold the institutional knowledge. The public information officer, this position, I I'm <clears throat> recognize, of course, I'm looking at this and a difference from what I hear as far as the qualifications of an individual we may already have in mind who has lots of uh, uh, background, whatever. But um, as far as the pay for this individual, this salary, you know, this I think is, I'm looking at it, it looks to be half of what it was under 10 years ago under the same position under County Executive Pollitt. That might be something to address or to look at. Um, I don't know that you need a legislative aid position, as I say. I don't think that that's really necessary. Um, um, and as far as the public safety pieces, there's definitely a lot going on there, but um, I don't think we should mess with what is important. Of course, having that assistant you know, director, I think that position is really important. 
Um, and we wouldn't be in half the situation I think we are in the county had we kept that and stayed with that for years. Do you have any suggestions for the fire service agreement then? Maybe you can sit with me for the fire service agreement and for the, uh, for the, um, yeah, I'd be happy to the, join for any meeting that, and the helpful. police accountability but board. I, and maybe what might be more helpful, you know, I work in the nonprofit world. We realize that government doesn't have to be the answer to everything. So we try to go about it and mm -hmm. find other answers to do things. So if, uh, if, if, uh, if there's an issue with communications among folks who are part of government, they can usually they form a uh, an association or other group in order to bring those uh, changes in that communication forward. So uh, I think that should be the case. Continue there, but I do think that if you had an individual as an assistant director of administration, they could continue to uh, provide that support. But that's not the whole job. Obviously, the county has a whole lot of other issues. Um, and other than that small space, but I think that that position is important. So I'd be happy to go forward to personally would be happy to go forward to continue to support to make sure that the county executive's office has the tools that they need in order to continue to do the job. However, we need to be thoughtful as the, as the ones who hold the purse. We need to make sure that we're thoughtful and how we spend that. If I could make a suggestion, if, if the council and the executive are okay, that we formulate a resolution to bring to the next meeting that addresses all of these issues we're, you know, our goal is to staff up the executive properly in line with budget. You know, that's, I think that's where we are. Is it a resolution? Shane, let me get, let me get, Shane's been very patient. I do want to say that, I mean, communication is the key. And I've, I've spoken to both of you about that. I think we need to keep the open line of communication. I think that's where we failed here on this topic. And we just, we just need to keep communicating. It's very important. And to answer Laura's question, I think we may head for a legislative bill, a reorg bill down the road, but for right now, I think we're, let's do a resolution. A resolution for, for what, the retitling? Well, I, th I think uh, the resolution may, may apply to all three positions. Yep. Um, because from what I heard, I think, Pam, you're not looking to retitle the assistant director of administration. You're not looking to add it as a new position. You're just looking to update that job description. Yeah. Okay, great. So yes, so it, it would be at this point, leave the, it would change one word in the job description and leave the title as the same. So that part of my memo would go away. We would add in the resolution that we would be updating the job description to have um, preferred, not required. And then the resolution on the other two pieces would be to add to the position control document the numbers that have been stated in the memo that I created. Um, so you're still looking to add a position. It would be, it would be reactivating the PIO mm -hmm. and it would be adding the other position again in the fact that there is sufficient funding within the department to do all three, as we have done with other departments within this county, all we would be updating, we would not be updating the dollar amount in fiscal 23, we would be updating the position control document, which is what we have done for other departments when they have requested changes, is we have updated the position control and not the budget dollars. Have you looked at um, the pay grade for the assistant director? We've taken off the requirement for the bachelor's degree. Is that going to change that? I don't believe it would change it. I, I, we got some information from Bolton on Friday. I need to digest that um, for where all of this would fall out, but I believe it still would stay within um, the grade and sufficient to cover the number. If we take, the, if we take off the bachelor's degree, what does that do in the event of succession? Say Bunky got a job somewhere else or he went somewhere else to work or, you know, this assistant I, director wouldn't be able to move up, right? Well, but I, I, I love the idea of succession within departments, but when you're, I mean, I've, I have a deputy director. Yes, that person could serve in my place, but they may or may not want that position for one. And second, yes, they could serve in my place in a temporary basis, but again, they may or may not want the position. And how a department, you know, my department, I, I manage certain things within my department, 
My assistant director manages certain things within my department. We're, we go to our strengths within my department. This is what we're looking for, is we're looking for the ability for the executive office to hire people that go to strengths that they have and fill a weakness that they have viewed within their department. It doesn't always mean that it's the best format to have every, everybody have the exact same thing top to bottom because then you're not filling your holes. This would keep the same title, would fill the holes that she has requested. And why again the, the, the uh, maybe I misunderstood that, the bachelor's degree changing that off, why? Because the if she is looking for a position that has strength within law enforcement, somebody who has that strength may or may not have a degree. They may have 20 years of experience within law enforcement or corrections or emergency services, but to get into those positions, not everyone has to have a bachelor's degree. Many do. Many do, yeah. but you may not. Many do, but we're also trying to mirror what Governor Hogan was doing, where they're changing things from required to preferred because we know that not everyone's path is, is a four-year degree. And we also know that there are people that have four-year degrees that I would never hire in that office. So we have to capitalize on people's strengths and we're kind of mirroring larger government, you know, and, and what they're doing, going from required to preferred. I, I was getting ready to say most government has a one-size-fits-all approach. It, it sounds like you're trying to do a more of a customizable approach and toward your customizable needs. And uh, I, 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 I come from a background where I just, I just have a high school diploma. I mean, I don't, I have a successful business. Um, I'm on the council. I'm 30 years old. And <laughs> I just have a high school diploma. I think anybody can be anything as long as they have the tools upstairs to do it. I don't think we should limit ourselves to a degree. Not that a degree is bad, a degree is great. Furthering your education is awesome. But I don't think we should say you can't be this because you don't have this, this piece of document that said I studied for four years. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just I think what you're doing is giving people a chance to to get a, a, a this particular job that has the specific qualifications that would not have been in, if they went to college, they probably wouldn't have been a police officer. So, I mean, they, they, would, they would have done something different. So you're, you're, you're trying to reach a, a broader net, and uh, I see what you're trying to do there. Paul, I would just suggest, I would just suggest that <clears throat> in reference to the public information officer and the legal aid, um, if it only requires a resolution and you um, work with Andy or whomever or Mrs. Hurley, uh, to put that forward. I'm not saying uh, that I'm in favor of it or the council is going to be in favor of it, but this is your time moving forward. Um, I think we have a much, much bigger issue with the um, uh, executive advisor of public safety. And I really, honestly, I, I honestly think that that job is going to require a referendum. I, I just do. Mm -hmm. May I say one more thing before I leave, and then I'll excuse myself. Michelle, I know that I've never been one to mince, mince words. And when you said just now, you're talking about a couple of guys on some motorcycles, that was very condescending, and that's not what it was, okay? They were organizing a drug transaction that took place, and I have it on video. Please let me finish, yeah. okay? The deal is, is that if we don't share this information, and I'm not speaking poorly about any administration because nobody can know this, this came from a video of a person that took it that was living in the neighborhood. These neighborhoods belong to these people. We can't give it back to the people if we don't listen to them, if we don't share information, okay? And when I say first responders, I'm not talking about police, just. I'm talking about all of us. How long before we in Wicomico County somewhere face a Uvalde? If we don't train together, law enforcement, um, fire, EMS, we're behind the eight ball, okay? This position, and just for the record, I have no intention of even applying for this. I've got a nice thing right here in Pittsville. I got five more years and I'm done, okay? <laughs> so my thing is this. <clears throat> if you don't put someone in a position to create a platform where information sharing and, inform and training together takes place, you're doing everybody a just an injustice yourselves your communities, and your police, fire, and EMS that go out and put their lives on the line every day. And with that, have a good day. Thank you, thank you Mr. Thank Harris. you, Chief Harris. Um, I, would, I would only offer that um, 
Mike Lewis is the highest elected law enforcement official in Wicomico County. Does, does he have a position on this? Uh, he does, but... Do you have a mic? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, um, he does, but, I mean, I, I don't think that he's any more important than, than any of the other police chiefs. I mean, yes, he is the highest. Um, I'm meeting with him on Friday to go over everything. I kind of wanted to see where this went, because if it was such a negative uh, vibe, then there really wasn't a sense in bringing it forward. I tried to do some preliminary foundation um, before before I do that. So I apologize I didn't have 50 people here lined up for it, but it was more so the beginning work session just to kind of see where you all were at. Um, you know, I mean, excuse me. Um, what I'm saying is it's very frustrating to try to say to a council um, that I'm here every day, 12 hours a day, this is what I need for my organization to be successful. And I have the support of X, Y, and Z to do so. And so I'm letting you know, if you decide not to, as Bob said, it's a disservice to everyone in Wacomico County, and that's okay. That's okay, but just know, I know what my office needs. I know what my weaknesses are. And so I hope that you all would respect it. I kind of assumed that this would just kind of be a, uh, you know, it's not a technicality, but that you would see, oh, okay, she's coming to us and letting us know these are the things that we need to be successful, and these are what these people have done and what we've accomplished in 30 days. Um, but, you know, it didn't work out that way, and so that's okay. I just think that even if you didn't have the people here, mm -hmm. we should have some kind of letter of support from the other police agencies within sure. our county. Mm -hmm. um, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, and they I've offered. dealt with all the police. Even yeah, they the, offered. I said I didn't think I needed it, but that was my fault. I mean, fault. that's, I that's what, yep. to me, if you want my support, mm -hmm. I would like to see how, what the other law enforcement agencies sure. think about having someone oversight them. I no, hope no, 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 hold no, on. Or, they're or not communicate. Over, yes, them. communicate. They're not communicate oversight at all. Because I've been in meetings with all the law enforcement mm -hmm. officers in this county, so I know the open communication that they present it to me that they're doing. So um, I just would like to see what sure. their position is before I would make a decision on the position that you really want. Yeah, no, absolutely. And like I said, this is something that they brought to me. And so that's kind of how the position was created is that they felt that there was no communication with the executive office. Brought it to you. The police, the, the different police agencies. So like I said, I should have had the letters of support. Get the letters of support and yep. then I'll go from there. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. All right. But they, but they will have general supervision of the Department of Corrections and Emergency Services, correct? Correct. But that, that would be, I mean, that's our departments. So they would, like, just like Bunky oversights all of them, it's the same verbiage, yes. Just from the executive office, and that's just how the position, I mean, under a deputy like director board. would be the same thing. It's so the, the oversight board, from the department. The yeah. warden's going to answer to him. Or well, they don't really answer to it. I mean, they just, like, that would be their point of contact in the executive office. So they're not going to be, this position wouldn't be a supervisory over the Department of Corrections or? It's literally the deputy director position just with a focus on emergency services and first responders. That's basically what it is. All right, well, we appreciate you bringing it forward. Ms. Wilbur, um, we do have a, uh, we have a work session next with the Board of Education and then the council will break for lunch after that. So uh, you can stay or we will certainly let you know when it's time to come back. I'm okay. guessing it's probably going to be uh, it's probably 1.30. Okay. If, Laura, mm -hmm. Laura, I cannot log on my computer. Can't log on? I logged on last night. I'm glad I did and read everything. No. I can't log on. Take it no, um, I don't think that they should have to stand out in the hall because we haven't managed our time okay. correctly, Joe. It's never been asking me when I got Board of the Education. Said, who gives me instructions on what to do? Oh, no, I'm talking about.